What's going on folks? Cody Matichuk here and I'm taking you through my bike. Doing a walkthrough. All the parts, goodies that I uh, put on to brave the winter out there in the mountains. This is my current bike, 2021 Yamaha 450 and a 129 free ride Yeti kit. This has been the best setup I've had all year. I ended up setting up two bikes. So one bike I set up for uh, jumping and freestyle stuff and then the other bike I set up is more of an explored explore bike as far as hard parts go they both have the exact same hard parts just the suspension changes all right now let's get to it starting at the front end now up front here we have some forks by RMR suspensions note the beautiful blue anodizing um, there's a lot of tricks in here this is what we call an A kit um, spring seats, uh, valving, springs, uh, and some other goodies in there to make this thing hold up and control through the stroke. Um, if you're just throwing heavy springs at it and trying to do heavy oil, it's like putting a band-aid on. It'll never be as good as um, actually getting into the valving and controlling how the stroke moves or how the fork goes through its stroke. Because a snow bike has a lot different needs than a moto, so it needs to be custom-tuned for that. We also have RMR suspensions. Um, we also have two RMR suspensions in the back here. So I'm running the Elka Stage 3's uh, that the Yeti kits come with. But we've uh, adapted it and made it stiffer. Um, a little bit stiffer initially. Not a lot, but a little bit. But a real progressive ramp up. Um, so it has that support. Uh, literally wailing down trails as fast as you can you never bottom this thing and then uh, you want to hit a big jump it's going to hold up but we uh, focus this year on still being able to um, have a bit of climbing ability and not lose that because as we go stiff we start losing that climbing ability in deep snow and we ended up finding a pretty sweet balance so i'm stoked on that rmr suspensions killing it as always front rear things tricked out all right on the front here we also have the 2022 spindle it's available now for you guys, spring in order and, and uh, as, as the kits come available. But this 2022 spindle, I cannot speak good enough about it. It's so good. It just solves every issue. People often think that a lot of the issues come with the actual ski, but most of the time it's the spindle. And it's a different geometry. It's different than 17 geometry, different than the 18 to uh, 21 geometry. It's its own... It's its own thing, and it works so good. All right, we're gonna start with the outer here. Selkirk engine armor. So this engine armor is a full wraparound heat exchanger in the bottom. Selkirk engine armor. This is a full wraparound kit. Keeps the snow out pretty good. And uh, as you're running and the bike heats up, it melts the snow that is in there. Um, and it keeps those engine temps just way more stable throughout the day. Uh, it seems to be really nice for carving as well. As you can see, there's less shroud. It's not as stuck out because it kind of wraps around right towards it. And it just seems to be a really nice um, add-on for the bike. It complements the bike. It complements my riding style. And been very stoked on the Selkirk stuff. Just got to note this sick little accent right, right under here that Selkirk uh, ended up putting on for me. So sick. Full custom. Underneath the Selkirk engine armor, we get into we get into my C3 setup. So I have a thermostat, C3 thermostat, running out to my Renthal handle bars, which C3 plumbed for me. So it's the C3 coolant bars, but in a Renthal bar. I run a Renthal 604 bar. It's uh, been my preference and my favorite bar for close to five years now, actually. Um, but how I got this plumbed, and there's another video, um, maybe I'll link it in the end or something, comes out of the thermostat and the bypass goes down to the heat exchanger on the bottom of the Selkirk engine armor, and then it goes up into my handlebars, and then back into the, the coolant line. Um, so I kind of simplified the process, there's a video out there, you can check it out. So these are my coolant lines, they come up to the handlebars here, and on that side. And then my valves right here for temperature. Um, up front here, obviously, C3 Bark Busters. Uh, I can tell you these things work pretty good. I smoked a tree this year, 
probably third wicked going for this climb and there's these branches coming out and I was like ah oh, they're just branches I'll blow through them well the tree trunk was right on the side of the branch it looked like the tree trunk should be over here but it was right at the branches so I blew through those branches smoked it and uh, well my hand my hand would have definitely been shattered if I didn't have it um, ended up working out pretty good not uh, not any damage on the bike and everything was fine so pretty stoked on the C3 bush guards bushwhackers yeah handlebar guards something like that now you may have noticed my uh, my kill switch cable I have wrapped around the handlebars uh, because well let's talk about this kill switch cable first so this kill switch is actually a Yamaha part off a boat motor I'm pretty sure it's a kill switch here if you push down or it's a tether if you pull it's a pretty sick little thing I'll find a shot of the uh, of the kill switch itself here's the kill switch all right so the kill switch is wrapped around up here and basically taken out of commission because of my last snow bike base so fun fact I went back and forth a bit on this if I should use a kill switch during the snow bike base or not and I decided not to because of the fact that we're going fourth gear off a cliff and uh, when I jump off if the motor died I think it would really pitch the bike forward and I don't want that I want it to fly as flat as possible so I ended up wrapping it around the bush guards and uh, not using it so what happens is when the bike opens opens fine motors still running and then as it lands into the snow it just stalls the motor so works pretty sick actually CR racing intake I've been running the CR racing intake for close to four years now it's simple it works I love it it's just keeps it's the best way to keep snow out of your intake you don't have to ever worry about it you just run it and forget about it it's perfect now if you notice I also have my temperature settings um, or my temperature gauge right there so I got my temp gauge my kill switch my intake and then underneath this air box stuck to the uh, the top of the CR intake the, the flat plate I have an hour meter so I get to you know watch the hours because with the vortex box you don't have the stock uh, Yamaha Wi-Fi connection maybe you do I don't know but hour meter for sure tells you how many hours it is so I threw an hour meter under there. All right, last thing that we held up front, Bulletproof Designs Rad Guards. These things are sick, they're so strong. Full billet, you know, they're colored blue, obviously. And uh, yeah, save your rods, because uh, you don't want to break a rad out in the backcountry. There's, uh, that's not gonna be a good day. So they're hard to see in there, but that's them behind that Selkirk engine armor. They are strong. So they, repl they replaced the white plastic louvers. And uh, yeah, save your ad. Now some of you guys might have noticed this right here. These little cables sticking out. That is for my Vortex ECU from PLX. Um, so the Vortex ECU from PLX is the uh, ECU that C3 sells. PLX, um, PLX Sport out in Quebec, they uh, design and tune the Vortex box for different applications. There's 10 different preset settings, depending on your bike, your setup, stock pipe, aftermarket pipe, type of fuel, th this and that. There's 10 different settings, so it's pretty user friendly to buy it, adjust it for your bike, and throw it in, and it makes a world of difference. No more uh, cold over fueling. Um, it runs better at all altitudes. Um, the altitude compensation is better than stock ECUs. Uh, and it just it cleans things up so much more um, because it was written for backcountry snow biking. So we actually bring a computer, the boys out at C3, they do a bunch of tuning as well. And you br they bring a computer all the way up the mountain to get these things just right for you guys. So. Vortex box by PLX Sport. Um, absolutely love it. I do just run pump gas, by the way. Next we have 
the saddle. Seat Concepts Comfort Seat. So what I order is the comfort seat with the firmest foam that they have. Um, the soft foam I find breaks down over time a little bit more, just kind of blows through and you, you hit the seat pan, I don't like that. So I run the firm, um, the firm foam with the Elements Seat Concept seat. I mean, that's the waterproof one, good for the winter. And uh, it's never let me down. These things, it's weird how, it's weird you wouldn't think building a snow bike that a seat would be a big deal. And when you go out and you ride your stock setup, you're like, yeah, I don't really need a seat. I understand, I've been there. But you do a day on this, and then you go back to your stock seat, you will understand why you want a seat concept seat. I promise you. We sit a lot of snow bikers, and this thing is going to help you. Next, we have the RP Racing exhaust pipe. Now, this one's the backcountry uh, exhaust pipe. So, if you notice, I don't have a pipe that's coming around my motor here. It literally just comes straight out the back. So, what we did is we have the outlaw pipe is the short header, and it usually has like a cone pipe. It's what I race with. Very, very loud, strictly for power. But what we did is we did the outlaw header and then the, the, the normal motocross system silencer on the, the outlaw header. And we created this backcountry pipe. This thing's been working great. Uh, it'll help with over rev, crisps, crisps up the bike, lets it breathe. It's uh, the biggest uh, ID inner diameter pipe that I've ever seen. It flows. It actually like flows and lets your motor do what it wants to do and uh, not held back by all the emissions stuff. RP Racing Pipe is what you're going to want if you want to unlock all the potential to your Yamaha snow bike. And if you notice, I actually heat wrapped my pipe as well. Um, some might notice this. This is melted plastic because there's usually a, a little piece um, that has basically like a heat deflector, a rubber pad with this uh, I don't know, stainless steel mesh kind of thing that rests against the pipe. Well sometimes if that falls off, just you pinching with your leg starts pushing the plastic right into the pipe. So I heat wrapped it and I actually silicone the back of it with a gasket maker that's good for high temp. And it, I mean it held for most of the season so I mean it's still holding. So it did something right. Foot pegs are another good thing that you're going to want to change. On my backcountry bikes, I run the C3 foot pegs. These things clear snow beautifully. They have lots of grip, and they just work. Along with that C3 thermostat, obviously with the C3 blue engine hoses. Because why not? you got to have those. got to look the part. In the back here, you might have noticed uh, we have a Plan B fuel can. So this is Plan B fuel can from C3. They fit into the Yeti so good, it's hard not to. In all my bikes and equipment, I run the Liquamoly oils. Um, so this thing ran the Liquamoly 040 snow bike oil all year long. Did great on it. Um, it's honestly, you take, you do oil changes, and you can tell the difference on good oil, bad oil. But your clutch is going to last longer. The shifting is going to be better, um, and everything just stays lubed and lasts longer. Besides that, to close up this kit, we have the Lime 9 decal package. Lime 9 is a graphics company I've been working with for a while now. They make the absolute best graphics I've seen, um, period. The fit, the finish, the durability, they just seem to knock it out of the park. Um, it's pretty cool to be able to put on decals and you line it up to an edge and it just works throughout the whole plastic. All right, so now's the wrap up. That's my bike, does the parts. It's not a crazy build. I leave the motor stock, I like to run pump gas. We're out in the mountains. There's no need to be having to mix fuel all the time and doing a lot of crazy stuff. Um, for me, I don't think so. Some guys, you launch the power, and I understand. I don't want to tinker. I ride too many days a year, and I just want to be able to ride something reliable. That is the wrap-up of my 2021 Backcountry Snow Bike 129 free ride. Put him out of truck. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.